All right. Uh, for this problem, we have uh, we have two processes. So, firstly, let's show the PV diagram, just for reference. So, firstly, uh, it is uh, constant volume. So, constant volume at, at heat. So, it's going up. And the secondly, it's uh, the second process is a constant pressure, and twice to it's a rigid volume. So it's pointing to the right and horizontal line. So let's say this is state A. State one, two, three. All right. So part A, we want to find out the final temperature of the gas. That is T three. Uh, to figure out this temperature, we need to calculate the, the quantities one by one. Uh, so, firstly, we already know the initial we already know the initial pressure, initial temperature, and amount of gas, and it's nitrogen gas. And also, we know the amount of heat adding to this uh, added to this uh, added to the system. So, we know that PV equal to an RT. And uh, in this case, we know that uh, uh, this is a, this is a P1. Okay, I'm just looking at this state, P1, V1 equal to an RT1. T1. So V1 equal to an R T1 over P1. All right. A is given. R is constant. T1 is uh, given to be 20 uh, Celsius degrees, and uh, you need to transfer it to Kelvin. So just plus 273. It becomes the Kelvin, okay? And the P1 is one point, uh, is one atom sphere, so it's just 1.01 times 10 to the fifth uh, Pascal. So the value I found is uh, 0 0.0603 meters cubed. So this is the initial volume. And then uh, the we need to calculate because because in this process in the from one to two the the volume does not change. So the work is zero. In that case the heat flow into the system just equal to the delta U. That is the change in internal energy which equal to N times C V times delta T. Alright. The C V because this is nitrogen gas. And nitrogen is a diatomic gas. So basically C V just equal to five half times R and times delta T. Okay. So we already know the value of Q and N is known. R is constant, so we can figure out the delta T. So delta T I found is uh, uh, delta T is uh, two sixty one point seven Kelvin. So that is that means T two is because the initial temperature T1 is 20 Celsius degrees, and delta T is uh, 261.7 Kelvin. So the temperature T2 is, uh, uh, let's see, it's 554.7 five, Kelvin. Uh, is it right? Yeah, it's right, okay. And then we can calculate the pressure at state two. So just just apply the state equation P two V two equal to an RT RT two. We already have the T two, and we have uh, uh, we have the uh, the V two because V two equal just just equal to V one. And also, uh, it it is a is at 2.5 moles, so we can find we can find the P2 as 1.91 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. All right. 
And uh, then in the process two, three, uh, so we know that V3 equal to two, equal to uh, twice of V2. That comes from the condition, comes from the problem itself, I think. Yeah, it's right here. So again, we can utilize the state equation P3, V3 equal to NRT3, right? V3 is simply equal to two times V2, and P3 is equal to P2, and the T3 is uh, T3 is actually an uh, unknown variable. So we can find the final temperature T3 equal to the one I found is uh, 1109.4 Kelvin. So this is the final temperature. Uh, part B, we want to find out the work done by the gas. So as you can see that only in the process two, three, there is, a, there is work. In the process one, two, the volume does not change. So the work is zero. So the work is simply equal to P times delta V because this is constant pressure. So P is constant and P is uh, over here, 1.09 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. And V3, uh, let me see, where's V3? Right, uh, V3 is simply equal to two times this one, this initial volume. And V2, V2 is, uh, it, it is the same as V1. So, I just write here, two times V1 minus V1. And this P just equal to P2, right? So just plug in the numbers and you see that uh, equal to 1.15 times 10 to the fourth joules, okay? In part C, we want to find out the amount of heat added to gas. Uh, the figure out this heat, we, need, we can calculate the change in internal energy first. So theta U equal to N times CV times theta T, right? Uh, we already know the amount of heat in process one, two. This is 1.36 times 10 to the fourth joules. And this is the um, uh, change in internal energy in process two, three, okay? So A is, uh, A is given and CV is uh, five, five halves of uh, times NR, uh, times R. And delta T, delta T, uh, we already have T3. It's over here, and T2 is over here. So we're gonna calculate this number directly. It's uh, 2.88 times 10 to the fourth joules. And then we can figure out the amount of heat in process two, three. So Q two, three, simply equal to this one, this delta U plus uh, the one in the problem. 1.36 times 10 to fourth. So the result is uh, 0.36. Oh, I'm sorry. I should not add this. I should add the work because this is a Q23. The work, the work is over here. So the result is uh, 4.03 times 10 to the fourth joules. All right. And uh, yeah, this is part C. And part D is we want to find out the change in energy for the whole process. So I just write here, part D. The total delta U equal to delta U 
in the first process, one, two, plus w in the second process, two, three, all right? So w one, two is giving the problem, which is 1.36 times 10 to the fourth. And w two, three is uh, over here. It's w two, three. So just plug in these two numbers, and you find the final result is uh, 4.24 times this point, okay, times 10 to the fourth. Joe's, all right? That's it.